we'll talk about the arachidonic acid pathway. So arachidonic acid is broken down into two things. It's like oxygenase, COX, and lipoxygenase, lipox. So COX and lipox. Which enzyme breaks down arachidonic acid into COX and lipox? Very important to remember, phospholipase A2. Okay. We continue. COX will lead to the release and synthesis of prostaglandins. So whenever you think of prostaglandins, you always think of inflammation. And for the most part, they lead to vasodilation, but do remember that thromboxane A2 specifically leads to vasoconstriction as well as play the aggregation, which just really uh, just registers as inflammation to me, okay? But for the most part, prostaglandins, you think of vasodilation, okay? Now, what about lipoxygenase? Well, from lipoxygenase, we are going to get leukotrienes. Specifically, liquid crying C4, D4, and E4. And what are these leukotrienes for? They are for bronchoplasm, bronchoplasm or uh, bronchoconstriction. Okay, that's what I want you to think of when you uh, when you see these leukotrienes. Okay. Now, this basically sums it up nice and easy. So let's talk about some drugs because that's where that's really what that's where they really get you. It's on the pharmacology portion. So what if, if I, what if I were to say we had a drug that inhibits phospholipase A2? Which drug medication does that? That's right, cortisol. Steroids, right? Steroids, which explains why steroids work so well as anti-inflammatory agents as well as uh, to treat asthma, you see? Now, what about if I wanted to inhibit, oops, COX, right? Cyclooxygenase. I'm sure we all know aspirin is the drug of choice, if not NSAIDs, right? Aspirin or NSAIDs. Uh, they inhibit COX, again, anti inflammatory agents help with, uh, well, and they can actually lead to vasoconstriction, which is important to remember uh, when we talk about renal. That side, I want you to remember that aspirin co uh, compared to NSAIDs, uh, aspirin is irreversible compared to NSAIDs, which are reversible. Okay, so very important that you remember that. All right, what about over here with lipoxygenase? Well, what if I inhibit lipoxygenase? What drug does that? That drug is called Xylutin. Xylutin, okay. Xylutin will inhibit lipoxygenase and therefore inhibit leukotrienes, which would therefore uh, prevent bronchospasm and therefore allow for uh, bronchodilation. Cool? Cool. And then last but not least, we have Los Hermanos Lucas, Spanish and English, the Lucas brothers, right? Let's spell this way, Lucas bros, right? This is my way of remembering it, the Lucas brothers, Los Hermanos Lucas, for my Spanish speakers. So the Lucas bros, right? Lucas brothers, I'm sure you can remember those too. We have Monty and Zafri, right? So Monty Lucas, Zafri Lucas, the Lucas brothers, what is it that they do? Well, they block the receptor. They block the receptor. So the leukotrienes are trying to head towards the uh, lungs to lead to bronchospasm. Remember, it blocks just before it arrives to the lungs. So it, it blocks the receptor compared to xylutin, which inhibits uh, the enzyme. Now, there is one unique disease. They rarely talk about it, but I want you to be aware of it, in which, uh, well, what, what happens in this patient, it's called aspirin-sensitive asthma. What happens is that if you give them aspirin, what ha uh, you're going to inhibit cyclooxygenase. So then all these precursors that are supposedly coming from arachidonic acid that should be coming this way cannot move that way because that enzyme is inhibited. Therefore, where do they go? They move this way toward lipoxygenase, thus leading to leukotrienes and therefore bronchospasm. Okay, so please be aware of that, aspirin-sensitive asthma. It's something that they'll rarely ask about, but it does come up from time to time. All right, guys, I hope that helped.